More than 14,000 schools in 24 African countries have been closed due to conflict and insecurity affecting the education of millions of children. An international aid agency warns that children who are not in school are at risk of being recruited by armed groups, forced into child labor, or a threat of physical violence and sexual exploitation, Mohammed Yusuf reports. Millions of African children are without education as schools struggle to cope with the impact of armed conflict and insecurity. The Norwegian Refugee Council says that as of June 2024, more than 14,300 schools were closed in 24 African countries. Countries with the most closures were Burkina Faso, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Cameroon, Chad, Nigeria and Niger. Christelle Ihe works with the NRC's Western Central Africa office. We have now more than 14,000 schools that have been forced to close because of violence, and this has an impact on an estimated number of uh, 2.8 million children. And so it means that uh, these uh, children are de- deprived of uh, education but also uh, more vulnerable to uh, different uh, protection risks. The latest figure is an increase of 1,100 closures from the previous year, when 13,200 schools were closed due to conflict and insecurity. Aid agencies say the lack of instruction makes it easy for the armed groups to recruit children, disrupting their education and further decreasing their chances of ever attending classes. The lack of schooling also makes children vulnerable to violence and exploitation, perpetuating cycle of poverty and instability. In some countries, conflict has nearly overwhelmed the education system. The UN Children's Agency, UNICEF, says one in four schools in Burkina Faso is closed. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, at least 1,450 schools nationwide were closed as of January, affecting 500,000 students. 47-year-old Risasi Mwinyi patients, a Congolese refugee living in Uganda, and two children were among those affected by school closures in the DR Congo. Fighting in Congo's Ituri province claimed the life of his wife. He fled to Uganda in April, seeking safety. He says the school in Congo where my children were enrolled has been closed and everyone has run away. The children were in grade 6 and grade 4 in Congo, he says. I have admitted them to school here so that they don't idle in the camps. A head of the NRC says the circumstances that cause school closures vary from country to country. What uh, uh, we observe is that there are three main reasons. First reason is uh, really for uh, military purpose. You know, it's about uh, regaining or gaining control over uh, territory. The second uh, reason is uh, schools are uh, seen by non-state armed groups as a, a symbol of uh, the government uh, authority. Patients is concerned about his future and that of his children who are forced to start education again due to the language barrier. Schools in the DR Congo are taught in French. <laughs> He says here, my children have to restart their education because they don't know English. Though the general situation remains dire, some schools have reopened in Central African Republic and Mali due to improved security. And in Burkina Faso, some 1,300 schools have reopened since October 2023. The Oslo-based agency calls on the international community, governments and warring parties to protect education by ending attacks on schools and ensuring the safety of learners and teachers. Mohamed Yusuf, VA News. Guinea-Bissau's President Umaro Sissoko Mbaro said on Thursday he would not run for a second term in elections in November. Mbaro, 51 years old, was erected in January 2020 to succeed outgoing President Jose Mario Vaz. He defeated runner-up Ma- Domingos Perilla with 54% of the vote and would have been eligible for another term in office. The unexpected announcement could trigger a power vacuum and heighten political instability in the Koplon country of around 2 million people. 
At the end of Council of Ministers on Thursday night, Mbaro said his wife had dissuaded him from running again. He said his successor would not be Perilla nor two other opposition politicians, Bryna Kamara and Nuno Gomez, without elaborating further or naming a successor. Mbalo, an ex-army general who served as prime minister under Vaz, inherited a long-running political impasse in a country where coups and unrest have been common since independence from Portugal in 1974. There were two attempts to overthrow him during his presidency, according to Embaro, the latest in December 2023. He dissolved the parliament days later for the second time since he came to power. Legislative elections that followed after the first time Mbalo dissolved parliament in May 2022 quashed his plans to push through a constitutional change that would have allowed him to consolidate power by riding the country of its semi-presidential system. Under the current political system, the majority party or coalition appoints the government, but the president has the power to dismiss it in certain circumstances, often leading to political dreadlock and turmoil. The country also emerged as a major cocaine trafficking hub in 2000s, according to experts, police on Saturday said. 2.63 tons of cocaine found on an airplane that arrived from Venezuela.